is Randy. I am here in the green room live from grandma's in North Dakota with Missing Link. I want to say this is number 22. Is it 21? 22? I think it's 22. Anyway, <laughs> I'm here with link number 22 and uh, this is the link that we're going to be working on today. That's what it's supposed to look like. We are supposed to be using 16 gauge wire. So I am excited about this link. If you guys have been following along with us, I would love to see your links or any projects that you've made in the Facebook group. Thunder Horse Descendant um, has a Facebook group, so you can drop your pictures down over there if you're following along. I get um, so many comments about how people really like these videos, so I'm so happy that you are enjoying them. Please make sure to give this video a like and subscribe so you can find me again on the internet. Uh, and uh, let's get on into this link. All right, here we are. If you're following along at home, this is page 62 and 63 of the Missing Link book. These are the links we're going to be working on today. So, um, let's see. It says that we are going to need 15 inches of 16 gauge bronze wire. All I have here is silver, so I'm gonna be using silver, but it is 16 gauge. So let me go ahead and get my 15 inches of this. Whoa, froggy tape. Jeepers. Froggy tape is getting crazy. All right, so 16 gauge is a very heavy duty wire. And um, I don't use it personally myself. I don't use it that often. If I do have to use a heavier gauge wire, I usually use like a um, like an 18. But I guess we're about to find out. All right, 15 inches. Okay. So I got 15 inches of the 16 gauge wire. Put that over there for now. And it says we are going to need a chain nose. A bale forming plier with a six millimeter round. <clears throat> I believe that to be this one flush cutter, a steel bench block, which I don't have in here, a Sharpie, liver of sulfur, which we won't use, steel wool rotary tumbler. Okay, so this is a, says that it is a moderate link, moderate uh, level, and let's read the tips. The tip says the size of the link will vary depending on the wire gauge used as well as on the diameter of the mandrel used in step two. By simply starting with a large mandrel, this link can go from a medium size to a large size. Okay. All right. So. This one is called Owl Eyes. I don't know if I mentioned that before. <clears throat> and here's what our steps look like. Let's see if I can get them all on camera. Um, so step one, make the middle, of, mark the middle of the wire with a Sharpie. Okay, so I'm just looking at this. If you've been following along, you know that when I make these, most of the time it's the first time that I've made them. I do that because that was kind of the, uh, Kind of the way of the, the mission behind this book. Clearly, I've never read this book before. I wanted to gain skills. I wanted to learn. And I just invited everyone out there on the internet to come along and learn with me. Sometimes it turns out. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes you just learn what not to do. But that's important too. So, <laughs> I'm just looking at these little pictures. And I think I got the gist of it. So, I'm going to put this over here for now. And I'm going to mark my sharp or mark with my Sharpie. You guys, I have to show you. Look, the Thunder Ponies came over and someone left me a lovely note here on my. The Thunder Ponies are my nieces. They came over and left me a lovely note on my bead mat. <laughs> it's my pink marker. So 
It's like you were only alone for five seconds. What has happened? So, okay, we got 15, so that means that we should have, what, seven and a half is where we will mark our wire. Seven and a half. Mark right here with the Sharpie. Okay. Check. Now it says number two, we are be begin a wrapped loop. See page 23 if you need help with that. Um, at the mark using a six millimeter barrel of the of the bill making pliers. Then wrap the tail wire once around the core wire. Okay, so basically we're just gonna start by making a wrapped loop, but in it's gonna be big and it's gonna be in the middle of the wire. All right. They said six millimeters. I don't know how, if, what is this? Is there inches? These are centimeters no yeah I'm not sure no it's got to be this one. I think it's this one I'm not really sure but that's the one I'm going to use anyway so we're just going to make a wire wrapped loop so it's in the middle, so I don't think that it should matter uh, which one is going to be the core wire. So it says, form the wire wrap loop and then wrap the tail once around the core wire. Okay, once around, just the one time. Try not to hit my phone. All right, got it. So this is what I've got. I don't know. That might be a little big. Who knows? This is how we're going. All right. So that was step two. No. Well, part of step two. Step three. Hold the loop with the flat nose player. Use your fingers and carefully shape the tail of wire around the first loop to create a second loop. Creating the wire rounded as you go. See figure two. Okay, so this is figure two. So we're going to hold it and we're basically like going to wrap around again. Okay. Repeat this to create the third loop. Wrapping the tire, the, the tire, wrapping the tail wire once around the core wire. So I take this to mean that we got to wrap it around the go around the core wire, wrap around again. So we got three and wrap around the core. Okay. 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 So I'm going to put, I'm going to load this back in here and then, well, let's see, maybe, no, I'm going to go with the chain nose player. Wait a minute. Sorry, flat nose. I'm going with the flat nose. So this kind of reminds me of when we were doing spirals. Now, when we did spirals, they said, make sure to move a little bit at a time and to move your wire and your plier to make it round. Just a little bit at a time. So, okay, that's what I'll do. Okay, now I'm back to the core wire. And they said to wrap it around one time around the core. So I'm wrapping one. And then I'm going again around. Hmm. OK. 
Okay. So here I am. Now I can see why they want to use a rotary tool with this because it is biting up on the wire. I can see that from here. Um, but I think we're going to flatten this, so I think we'll be okay. <clears throat> okay, then it says go around the core wire and repeat. Create the third loop, wrap the tail once around the core wire. Okay, so we also have to wrap here again for the third time. Okay. So that's what I got. See figure three. So that's what we did. Theirs look a little to be not so like to like so tight, but okay. Four. <clears throat> Measure from the start of the wrap on the inside loop to the bottom of the last wrap on the outside loop. Mark the length on the core wire with a sharpie. We could get a sharpie out. Okay, so let me read that one more time. Measure from the start of the wrap. See figure four. Uh, the start. So I would assume the start of the wrap is here. Right here and to the last wrap on the outside. So here, the last wrap, is that the core wrap or is that this one? I would assume it's this one. So I'm supposed to measure this. So let's see what we got. I got, uh, I don't even know what that is. What is, what is that? like a little bit more a little bit more than a fourth of an inch I don't have my little cheat sheet Jeff maybe <laughs> but I'm just gonna move this down to the end and I'm gonna go ahead and mark the wire right there where it says to okay okay so this is what I got. I marked it there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, so number five, begin a wrapped loop at the mark using the six millimeter barrel of the bail forming pliers. Then wrap this tail wire once around the core. Repeat steps three, fill in any bare space around the core by wrapping the tail, the wire and trimming it. Trim wires on the back side of the link and press the cut end down to the chain, down with the chain nose. Okay, so basically we're just going to do the same thing. I better not shut that. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. So uh, I'm not going to cut this because I feel like I might like say I mess up or something. Um, if I need more space, I could go up with this side and down with the other side so that it would look even. So I'm just going to leave it for now. I'm going to go back here and I'm going to start the wire wrapped loop. I'm starting at the top of my mark because I feel like that is probably where I should start. So, okay. So I'm going to do a little bend forward and I'm going to come up and around spin this around to get a wire wrapped loop started okay and then i'm going to wrap this around i'm going to bend that down i'm going to wrap this around one time as they said okay so i can see that mine is crooked i would assume i have to spin it so it's the same because that's what the that's what it looks like on here so I'm gonna go ahead and do that so I'm just gonna spin it so that they're both flat against my hand and then I'm gonna go again so okay push this up around 
do the same thing. Well, that I was doing before. Okay, there's one. And then wrap around the core wire. Okay, and then again. Sitting in there very good. Let's squish it. Okay. So I'm working on my third one now. Uh huh. Uh oh. got this little bend in my wire I don't want that there so I'm gonna try to maneuver it a little more around just by wiggling yes that's as good as it's gonna get and then wrap around the core okay so, back to the book. Bare spaces around the core wire, wrapping it with the tail wire if needed. Trim them both back on the back of it. So this is the back. And the reason I know this is the back is because this is where all the loops are. You can see the loops here. Versus the front has the wire coming out. So... Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna hold on to this and spin this back and trim it off. Well <laughs> and I'm gonna tuck that in with my chain nose. And I'm gonna do the same over here. Okay, so this is what I got. This is supposed to look like owl eyes, like this. Okay. <clears throat> Trim the tail wires back. The link, press the ends down with the chain nose. Hammer the loop section with the rawhide mallet on the bench block to flatten if necessary. Um, I would say mine is pretty flat, but I am going to try to give it a little hammer just to see if I can get some of these mar, uh, Mars out. So, <clears throat> I'm going to run to the kitchen and grab the, the cutting board. I'll be right back. All right, guys, here I am on the floor. Um, I'm just using my, I'm just using my grandma's uh, cutting board because this is what I got. So I just am going to try to hammer this, um, the sides here, not in the middle, just Just I don't know if that's really going to help me much. A little bit. Helped a little bit, but not really. Okay. So, oh, <laughs> get all situated here. So this is what I got anyway. Let's take a look at the picture in the book. Okay, and so you could run this through your tumbler and uh, do the steel wool, etc. But here's what I got. I'm pretty happy with it. I don't know. It feels really large to me. I don't know if it was supposed to be this large. Um, but I guess these ones are pretty big, but they did say in this tips that, you know, dependent on how big your wire is and all that good stuff that, you know, it would be smaller or larger. 
So these wires look to be a little smaller and closer together. Um, but I mean, it looks like owl eyes. This one's a little wonky, but you know, owl eyes, they're, they're not perfect. So I'm happy with it. Um, this could be used. I mean, honestly, I don't know how well it would bend, but a thing I might do with this is you could use this as a link, um, for like charms. That would be cool. Or I don't know if we could fold it in half and make it into like a bale. That would be cool. Um, but anyways, it's the link. That's the link. And I think that it turned out pretty good. So there we go. I hope you guys are having a wonderful, spectacular, amazing day. This thing doesn't want to stay on this book. I hope you're having a wonderful, spectacular, amazing day and sending all the good beauty vibes. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.